Good day, everyone. This is Introduction to Linguistics, and this is part two of the topic phonology. Today, we're going to talk about the distinctive features of phonemes. Abu Garza in 2018 claimed in the study Distinctive Features of Phonemes that phonology is concerned with sound relations and patterns and features are commonly used in phonology than in phonetics. That's the term distinctive features. Frumkin, Rodman, and Hyams in 2014 wrote that when a feature distinguishes one phoneme from another, it is a distinctive feature or, equivalently, a phonemic feature. Roman Jacobson proposed that there is one universal set of distinctive features for all languages which define classes of sounds relevant to phonology. All contrasts? must be stated in terms of these features, and all restrictions on distribution must be stated in terms of these features. Distinctive features are the universal set of cognitive properties associated with the speech sounds that are used in language. They determine the contrasts which may exist between speech sounds, account for the ways in which these sounds may change or alternate, and define the sets of sounds. Feature Systems the formal development of distinctive feature theory is due primarily to Roman Jacobson. He formulated that only binary oppositions are accepted, plus and minus sign. Descriptions should be based on a minimum number of DFs, or distinctive features. These are selected from a limited set of universal DFs. The DF values of the sounds of the language are arranged as a matrix with plus sign, minus sign, and zero or not relevant values. An alternate way to analyze sounds makes use of the concept of binary or paired features where there is an opposition between the presence or absence of a feature in a particular sound. Plus feature and minus feature. These are to indicate the presence or absence of that particular feature. A notation is used for features in which the name of the feature is capitalized and enclosed in square brackets. The presence of the feature is indicated by a plus sign and its absence by a minus sign. The following table shows the major features. The first column are the features, second column definitions, and the third column examples. Let's start off with sonorant. Sonorants have spontaneous voicing, and examples for this are vowels, approximants, and nasals. Non-sonorant. Non-sonorants are also called obstruents. Spontaneous voicing is not possible, and they have both voiced and non-voiced elements. Examples, we have plosives, fricatives, and affricates. Vocalic. In producing vocalics, there's no obstruction at any point. These are vowels, semivowels, r, and l. On the other hand, non-vocalic has an obstruction in the production process. These are nasals, consonants, non-sonorants. Consonantal. There is obstruction at some points in the vocal tract for consonantals, as narrow as in fricatives and approximants. Non-consonantal. Vowels are non-consonantals. No obstruction is possible in their production. Cavity features. Anterior. These sounds are produced with obstructions in front of the palatoalveolar region. And examples for anteriors are labials, dentals, and alveolars. Non-anterior. These sounds are made before the alveolar region. And examples are palatoalveolar, velar, and glottal. Coronal. The blade of the tongue is raised upwards from a neutral position. And examples are dentals, alveolar, palatoalveolar. Non-coronal. The blade of the tongue is not raised above the neutral position. And examples are labials, palatal, velar, and vowels. The tongue features high. When the tongue is raised above the neutral position. Examples, palatals, velars, high, close vowels. Non-high. 
when the tongue is not above the neutral position, like labials, glottal, central and low, open vowels. We also have low. The tongue is below the neutral position. And we have examples here, low, open vowel, a, ah, and the glottal, h. Non-low. When the tongue is not lowered below the neutral position, examples are central and high vowels, labials, alveolars, palatals, and velars. Back. Tongue is retracted backwards from the neutral position, and we have velars and back vowels as examples. Non-back. When there is no retraction of the tongue and sounds in front of the velar. So we have labials, dentals, alveolars, palatals, central, and front vowels as examples. For lip features, we have round and non-round. It is round when the lips get rounded and narrows the lip orifice. Examples are back vowels, velar approximant, w, as well as labialized sounds. We also have non-round such rounding does not occur in this case, and examples are all front, central, and low open back vowels, coronals, palatals, alveolars, and non labialized velars. For secondary aperture features, we have nasal and non nasal. For nasal, velum is lowered to allow air stream pass through the nose. And for non-nasal, velum is not lowered for its production. And there is an oral articulation of sounds. All oral sounds are produced in this manner. For manner features, we have continuant. There is no total blockage of air at the point of articulation. Examples are fricatives and approximants. Non-continuant. There is blockage of airflow at some point in the constriction of the articulatory organs, and examples are plosives and affricates. We also have delayed release. The air is gradually released after its obstruction, and examples are the affricates ch and j. And we also have non delayed release. Obstructed air is released instantaneously. Example of this is plosives. Phonation features. We have voiced and non-voiced. For voiced, there is a vibration of the vocal cords in its production. And examples are all English vowels, voiced consonants in English. And we also have non-voiced, wherein there is a free passage of air through the glottis. And examples are voiceless consonants, devoiced vowels, and consonants. Remember that DFs are phonological features, so such devoiced consonants and vowels can occur due to environmental conditioning. The distinctive features and their definitions. Sonorant. Sonorant is a normally voiced sound characterized by relatively free airflow through the vocal tract. Sonorants include vowels, semivowels, liquids, and nasals. The opposite of sonorants are obstruents, which constrict the flow of air more severely. Consonantal. Consonantal are the sounds characterized by a partial or complete obstruction of the airflow through the speech organs. Syllabic. Each syllable in a word requires a syllabic sound. Put another way, every word has just as many syllabics as there are syllables. Vowels are always syllabic. Nasals and liquids may or may not be. Hence, they are marked that way on the chart, which is going to be shown later. And the other consonants are never syllabic. Continuant. The flow of air in continuance is not blocked at any point in the articulation of the sound. They include all the sounds other than stops and affricates. We also have nasal. When the velum is relaxed, the air flows through nasal cavity to produce nasal sounds. Labial. Labial sounds are articulated by an obstruction at the lips. This does not include rounding, which also takes place at the lips. We have p, b, f, v, and m. Alveolar. Sounds are formed by touching or nearly touching the tip of the tongue to the hard ridge immediately behind the upper front teeth. We have t, d, s, 
z, n, l, r. Palatal. Sounds are produced by moving the front part of the tongue to or near the hard palate at the roof of the mouth. Velar. Sounds are produced by moving the back of the tongue to or near the vellum or soft palate. Coronal. Sounds are made by raising the front or blade of the tongue from a neutral position. We have the interdentals, alveolars, and alveopalatals. Sibilant. As the name suggests, sibilant sounds produce a hissing effect by forcing the air through the narrow opening formed using the middle of the tongue. Anterior. Anterior sounds are produced by an obstruction in the front part of the oral cavity from the alveolar ridge forward. They include labials, interdentals, and alveolars, but not alveopalatals. Voiced. Voiced sounds are produced with vibrating vocal cords. They include all sounds that are plus on the runt and with the exception of <sighs> all obstruents come in voiced and voiceless pairs. Back. A sound produced in vowels and semivowels with the tongue drawn back or retracted from a neutral position. Rounded. Sounds produced with a rounding of the lips to give a narrow opening. Low. Low sounds are produced where the jaw slightly open to allow the body of the tongue to draw lower. American English has three low vowels. Note that vowels that are neither high nor low are mid-vowels, which are otherwise not categorized here. Tense. Tense sounds are produced with a contraction of muscles at the base of the tongue. In American English, the feature applies only to vowels that are not low. Observe the feature grid of English consonants here. Note that all consonants except the glides and are consonantal. Nasals, liquids, and approximants are sonorant, while fricatives, liquids, and approximants are continuant. Now, observe the feature grid of the basic English vowels here. Note that vowels are all vocalic, an open oral cavity with voicing, as well as sonorant, voice, continuant. The diphthongs A, U, I, ow, o, and oi cannot be distinguished by these features but must be treated as a combination of vowel plus glide.